Hey, welcome to another update on Archmage Rises. I am joined by nobody. Um, that is because I just have a bunch of things to uh, tell all you fine folks. And um, with uh, me traveling next week, I'm actually going out next week to Portland to see Nick uh, for a week. And we're going to go to a game conference and do some other cool things. And so with travel and his work schedule and stuff, it just wasn't possible to uh, work it all out for today. So all you got is me. But that's okay, because I figured out the reason why these update videos always take so long uh, is because uh, the other people on there, they just talk too much. Um, if they would just let me have the floor, then they would be a lot shorter. So, here we go. Um, I am happy to say that on build 11, there were three big tasks that needed to be done, fixed, improved, whatever you want to call it. And I just finished number two. And so that means things are really accelerating now and I'm now working on the last one of the three big items. So why did this take so long? Um, so item number two that I was working on is the uh, economy and specifically the trading economy, but also the simulation side of the economy, making sure trade routes existed and they were real and they could be interrupted and all that good stuff. So why did this take so long? Um, there was a ton of things in the simulator that were I don't know, needing improvement. They needed to be fixed. They, they weren't working right. They, they weren't working fully. Um, they were a little too fake. They needed to be more real. Um, there were some forum discussions that we had and uh, I implemented some of those ideas. And so um, in the article that goes along with this update video, I will list out all the stuff that I've done over the last two weeks in order to get the, the build 11, you know, coming along. Um, so I'm just gonna hit some highlight points for you. Um, now the mayor is the one who's responsible for building the buildings in the towns. So what that means is um, when we were generating the towns, I would first say, okay, here's a new town. We're at the very beginning of the world generation. So automatically give it an in and give it, um, I don't know, a lumber mill or whatever. And just like, here's like a whole bunch of starter buildings. And then like things can get going from there. Um, and then the mayors could start new towns um, then they would start with only one building in them, which is the town center, and then they would maybe add additional more. Anyway, I've unified all that logic, so now when the game begins, it's just a, a mayor with a town with one building of the town center, and he builds all the other stuff. And so that really helped me see what was right and what was wrong um, in that mayor logic. Um, that necessitated actually building the towns in the correct locations, so locations where the people wouldn't starve out because there was no way to generate food, um, so th that was a necessary fix. Um, when he builds his buildings, he now is really smart about where he builds uh, the buildings, so if a town doesn't have a weaponsmith, but another town close by has a weaponsmith, he won't build a weaponsmith unless there are some exceptions for why he might end up doing it eventually. But as a rule, that enables the trade routes to exist so that, um, because why would you? I mean, it'd be like opening three Walmarts all next to each other. That just doesn't make any sense. So you gotta spread things out. And so now the mayors will look holistically around the whole area, places that they can reach with their caravans and decide which buildings to build and look for holes in the economy and try to fill those holes. So there was a bunch of work, a lot of testing that goes into that. Um, I also improved the performance of the game by splitting up how the simulator uh, simulates. So up until this point, a town would have what I call a turn, um, which uh, we changed to being hourly. It used to be weekly and then daily, and then we made it hourly. And so now when a town gets a turn, um, it would do a whole lot of calculating. There's a lot of things that would, that would happen. But then what I realized was um, there's a lot of stuff that doesn't need to be done hourly. And so I was able to split it out um, a whole lot and I was able to improve performance probably by 50 or 60 percent um, so now I can simulate um, a week in about uh, under two seconds um, and no a month in about two seconds and a year is about 12 seconds but over the course of a year I usually end up having some kind of error um, that happens because uh, somebody does something that I didn't anticipate or whatever and, and I don't actually get to the end of it. But anyways, uh, it makes sense that it would be somewhere around 12, 15, 20 seconds to, to do a year. Um, so that's really good when it comes to the world generation. Um, performance improvements were necessary um, in order to have a, a rich world um, and uh, those things have already happened. So another thing I worked on is uh, the people that work at their jobs, whether they're 
uh, working in a grain field or um, as a weaponsmith, um, if they don't get paid for a period of time, they quit their jobs. And I know that just makes sense, but up until this point, they weren't. And so um, that actually created a, what I would call a domino effect, or at least uh, the symptom created a domino effect. So I had, uh, I was testing this work and I was like, why is this person quitting their job? Um, they're like a blacksmith and there's metal available in the world. Like, why are they quitting their job? They, they should be doing it. Well, it turns out that um, they weren't getting the metal. And so since it didn't work for a while, then they quit their job and they went and they did something else. So I started digging into why aren't they getting their metal? And then I looked at the traders and it looked like the traders weren't going out to the different towns. Actually, they were always going to the same town. My scoring algorithm had them going to um, always the same town. It was always scoring it super high. Um, so I fixed that and now it would actually score based on a few more criteria. One of them being what's actually in stock not what's supposed to be there. So if a town has a mine and it's producing metal, uh, how much metal is actually there as opposed to the fact that they export it. Um, and so that fixed the scoring thing. I was like, okay, yay, this works. But it turns out that I actually had a problem with the traders um, and that was that they would only buy once and then they would never buy again. So they would still go on their trade routes. The merchant would say, hey, go over there and stuff. And he would go over there and then he would have a shopping list and then he just wouldn't buy anything. And then he would return home. And so, um, that ripple effect led to lots of people quitting their jobs because they could never get the stuff they wanted. So um, it's a, a really integrated system and uh, when it doesn't work, it really, really doesn't work. And when it does work, it's pretty amazing. Um, so that's also why it takes a while in order to work on these things. Um, the next thing is that uh, if people don't make money, enough money, um, they have to pay rent each month and if they can't afford the rent, they get kicked out of their house. And so that makes them uh, live on the streets um, for a while. Now, if they're hungry and they're living on the streets, then they will become beggars. And once they become a beggar and they're doing that for a while and they're still starving, like they're not making enough money as a beggar, um, uh, then they will turn to crime. And that's how you get banditry and vandalism and a bunch of other things going on in there. So there's like a whole chain of stuff that all has to work correctly for all that to happen. And uh, I got that working over the last uh, two weeks. Um, oh, another thing is uh, houses. So I just said that uh, if somebody um, can't pay their rent, get kicked out of their house, well, when somebody new comes to town, um, I want to actually reuse that house uh, rather than them just building another house because then you would have like all these empty houses and then people living in new houses and it just didn't make any sense. So now um, the people will look to see are there are already houses? Okay, then we'll just move into that existing house. If there's not enough housing available, then they will um, build a house. And so what I hope to show in the town view is a town that is decrepit by all the buildings looking abandoned and the people living on the streets and a town that is uh, thriving by all the buildings are bright and nice and they have flowers in them and that kind of stuff. Um, the next thing I worked on uh, again for the economy was uh, death and passing on to heirs. So if you have a person who owns the inn and they die for whatever reason, um, uh, that job needs to be filled, but the ownership of the inn needs to transition to somebody else within the family. And so that code just wasn't there yet. And so I had to put that in and now it does. And so whenever anyone dies, it looks to see who is the heir um, and uh, it'll be the spouse. And then if there is no spouse, then it will choose um, one of the children if they're adult. And if they're not adult, then it just disappears. Um, the ownership just disappears and they that family loses the claim to that thing and it goes to, uh, I guess, the mayor. Um, so once they uh, identify that heir, then that person might take over the job. So they own the inn and then whatever job they were doing, they would go and become the innkeeper. But that doesn't make sense if the spouse was mayor of the town and then the person running the inn died and then they stopped being mayor to be in to be innkeeper, like those kind of things don't make sense. So there's a bunch of work in there to figure out what is the smartest thing to do. Um, and if we can't figure out the smartest thing to do, then fine, then nobody owns it and it just goes away. And then somebody new can come along and be recruited and take over the inn and, and run it. Um, I already covered off the beggars. And um, so another issue I was having in the simulator um, related to the economy was the sleep cycle. And so 
every person, every hour is being simulated and they're making choices about what to do. And so if they go to sleep for eight hours, then there's not a lot of choice. They basically, they wake up after eight hours. Um, as they work throughout the day, as they go and gamble and drink and eat and, and do the other things. Um, so one of the things that uh, was creating a really weird problem was traders would go to another town and travel back and they would get home late at night. Like let's say they got home at six in the morning. Well, they're tired at this point and um, I don't tell anybody when to go to bed. They go to bed because they're tired and so there's like a threshold um, just like in The Sims, once it gets like filled up, then they're like, I'm sleepy, and then they, they go to sleep. So the problem was that um, traders that were, that were traveling, they couldn't go to sleep until they got home, so they would get home, then they would go to sleep. If they went to sleep at 6 a.m., then they would wake up eight hours later, which would be, I guess, 2 p.m., um, and then because the sleep cycle is kind of perfect like they get tired enough every 24 hours um, that they need or every 16 hours that they need to go to bed then for the rest of time that person will be going to bed at 6 a.m and waking up at 2 p.m and so i'm like well that's no good i mean you need to get back to a more of a day night cycle um, and so i put in uh, sleep deprivation um, so that people will start to swing when they go have these crazy sleep situations they will swing back towards a more day night cycle now everybody is controlled by their job just like we are in real life so if the person has to be at work for 8 a.m. and they go to bed at 6 they only get two hours sleep that creates a, a sleep deficit of six hours which they then try to make up and stuff and so anyways the point is is that um, during the day the player can generally see everybody everybody has their own separate bedtime so it's like it's not hard coded or anything but i just made the sleep system self-healing um, so that way it, it would be a little more realistic otherwise you'd end up with people that were going to bed at noon or even 5 p.m or something and, and if the player wanted to see them um, it would be impossible to know, like, when is this person awake and when are they asleep? So I wanted to get people more of a day-night cycle, which is more realistic. Um, so that's very quickly what I've already done. And um, there's really nothing to show at this point because it's all kind of internal stuff. But the good news is that I finished the big second task. Um, so the economy now works and you can go to different towns and you can buy goods and you can trade them and uh, fill gaps in the economy. Um, it's not perfect, um, but it is, so it works. It's not necessarily balanced yet, but I'm gonna circle back to the balancing part after um, I finish the other tasks. Um, so there's still 21 things left on the list on the Steam page of uh, what is outstanding for build 11. I am currently working on item number seven. Um, and the reason I'm working on that one in particular, um, item number seven is uh, entering and exiting of towns. So if a town has a wall around it, then traffic is controlled through the gate. And so there, you'd have to pay a gate tax in order to come into the town. Um, and also, if you go into the town, you punch someone in the nose, um, then you get a wanted level. And so if you were to come back to that town and walk through the gate, you might be wanted, you might be imprisoned. And so um, if a town has gates that are walls, You'd either go through the gate and risk being caught or you would sneak through or you would use spells to, in order to climb over um, the wall somewhere and stuff. And so that all needs to be put in um, to create that kind of uh, cause and effect uh, of how you treat people within the town. Um, also, uh, at this game conference that Nick and I are going to be at, um, and also the musician James is going to be at, um, uh, I'm going to be demoing it. And so um, this particular task is a good one to be able to demo to show like how you can like say kill someone in the town and then your wanted level goes up and then how you have to sneak around and, and stuff. So um, that's why I'm working on that one. It should take me a couple days to get on that and then I'll get on the, the big one, which is number three, which is about finishing quests and destroying lairs. Um, that needs some work. So um, I'm getting close, not quite close enough yet to uh, talk about a, a release date. Um, but my plan is to, once I have the um, build and I'm satisfied with it, I'm going to give it out to the small council members. There's three people um, that I'll give it to just like for a quick pass, just say like, is there anything really glaring uh, that's wrong with this before I put this out to everybody else? Um, but I'll worry more about that when uh, it's actually arriving. But anyways, we're, we're now in the, the last leg of this thing and Build 11 really is coming and I am working on it. And um, I guess that's all I have to say. So 
Thanks for your interest in Archmage Rises. Appreciate it. And uh, thanks for sticking with me for four years, many of you. Um, and uh, we're getting close to having a build that really is fulfilling a lot of the promises uh, made on the website. So until uh, next time, goodbye. <laughs>